A new article just demonstrated that near-infrared light can penetrate through an entire human body, even at intensities of only 9 and 17 milliwatts per centimeter squared. And they went on to demonstrate a systemic effect when they were treating the backs of patients with 850 nanometer light at 9 milliwatts per centimeter squared for 15 minutes. They showed an improvement in eye health. So we can see here the title is Longer Wavelengths in Sunlight Pass Through the Human Body and Have a Systemic Impact Which Improves Vision. Now this article actually has a lot going on for it. It actually studies five different things. It studied sunlight through an entire human body. It studied 850 nanometer LED light through the entire human body. They studied broad spectrum and 850 nanometer light through a human hand. And they studied visible and near-infrared light through clothing. And they studied the systemic effect of treating a human back with 850 nanometer LEDs to improve eye health. So this article is actually like five different studies in one. And if you follow this kind of thing, you might have seen Dr. Roger Schultz recently did a video on this exact same article. So if you want to hear it from a triple board certified doctor, then you can go over to check it out on that channel. Otherwise, you can hear my thoughts as an engineer that sells LED products. But I do have a couple notes and criticisms for Dr. Schultz on what he presented in his video that we'll go over now. And I'm sure Dr. Schultz doesn't mind because real science invites criticism, whereas pseudoscience sees criticism as an attack. So as you know, myself and Gimba Red often receive some of the most criticism in the entire industry, and we also dish out some of the most criticism in the industry which just means we're following the scientific process. So here's the part that I saw was a little bit off. That the amount of energy in these longer wavelengths start to increase and get longer and longer and peak right about 850 nanometers. So I saw the area that he circled on the graph was not really corresponding to the peak. It looked like the real peak was a little bit to the left of what he circled. So I thought it was kind of odd that he would be circling something that's clearly not the peak when the real peak was a little bit to the left of 850. Um, so I thought that was odd. So I wanted to zoom in. You can read this whole study completely for free. So you don't have to take it from me. You don't have to take it from Dr. Roger. I'm just giving you my own viewpoint as an engineer. And as an engineer, you know, I'm pretty good at interpreting graphs. So so here's the full scale graph from the study and it's pretty clear that around 800 nanometers is the peak of penetration and maybe a little bit to the right of there maybe 805 maybe 810 um, but, but clearly the peak and once you get into the middle of that range between 800 and 900 there is a little bit of a dip downward so it seems like the peak penetration was even around 800 a little bit more maybe 810. So I zoomed in even closer and I didn't add any lines of my own yet. These are still just the natural grid lines that are part of the original graph. But you can see very clearly the peak was around 800 nanometers, a little bit to the right of 800 nanometers. And it drops down a little bit once you get into the middle of the range, 850 to 900. So now when I draw in the 850 line, it corresponds to that low point in the penetration diagram. So it's actually a relative lower point when it's pretty clear that around 800 is the peak. So the study itself directly says this results in a peak in a region of 800 nanometers to approximately 870 nanometers. So again, that whole range has the best penetration. Again, I'm kind of nitpicking of the highs and the lows, but it's very clear, you know, we just want to be more precise with how we relay this information. It's clearly not 850 is the absolute peak. The best peak was around uh, 810 or 805. But again, if we're just kind of lumping the whole range as, you know, 800 to 870 has the best penetration. If you just pick one of those wavelengths, they happen to pick 850 nanometers for the rest of the study. So that's probably why Dr. Roger was picking up on that. And so that makes his kind of storytelling a little bit more congruent because he probably didn't want to confuse his audience and start talking about the peak was at 800. And then the stu why would the study use 850? Well, the study probably used 850 because that's a commercially available LED. So there's nothing necessarily wrong with it, but it clearly is not the best penetration so that's just what I'm trying to get across and as I said they also check the broad spectrum through a human hand as well so the last one was through the entire body through the chest and the back and this one's through the hand and so this graph through the human hand it's very clear the peak is around 800 smack dab right at 800 so the best penetration according to these measurements are right around 800 and so we see a direct quote from the study saying water absorption is a key contributor to the gradual decline seen from around 820 
nanometers onward. So again, they're confirming about 800 to 820 is probably the best penetration, and then the penetration declines after that because there's more water absorption. So I have one more nitpick for Dr. Roger. Again, it's just to expand on some of these ideas, explain some more mechanisms, and give an additional perspective. Estimate that a very small amount of light can get through the human body, and that type of infrared light is going to be absorbed by many different absorbers, but specifically what we believe is proteins and electron transport chains in the mitochondria. So we know this statement is also not entirely correct. Most of the absorption will be occurring from water. So even though we know the water absorption coefficient is quite low in the 800s, it's not zero. And because the water molecules make up the majority of our molecules in our body, so just based on probabilities and percentages, most of the photons will be absorbed by water and not by proteins and electron transport chains. So again, that's the most popular mechanism for photobiomodulation is upregulating that cytochrome C oxidase with direct photon absorption and photochemical effects of knocking off a nitric oxide. And so that's why it's easy to get that confused and assume that the photons are little homing missiles that are going directly towards mitochondria and electron transport chain when they probably don't take up much volume in the body. So Dr. Schultz did a good job of explaining the free-floating mitochondria in the blood, and that helps explain some of the systemic effects of red light therapy. So it's also important to note that water absorption plays an important role in photobiology. So as I mentioned, this study had a very interesting goal. It was measuring the amount of light coming through the thorax. So it was coming light through the back and through the chest. So in one experiment, they had sunlight and they estimated about 17 milliwatts per centimeter squared in the 850 nanometer range. And the sunlight coming through the chest was 0.00. .00 five, six milliwatts per centimeter squared. So again, just a trace amount is probably not therapeutically relevant, but it is a fun fact that it can go all the way through the body. Then they did another test with an LED panel with 9.18 milliwatts per centimeter squared on the back, and they found 0 0.00000 three, four milliwatts per centimeter squared on average was coming through the chest. And the amazing thing is that they chose these relatively low intensities to demonstrate the penetration through the entire body because penetration is primarily a result of the wavelengths interacting with tissue and not so much based on intensity. So it's interesting that they're choosing these low intensities, single digit, double digit, and you're getting very good penetration. And then as an interesting twist, they did a study on the systemic or abscopal effects of red light therapy, basically meaning that you treat one part of the body to benefit a different part of the body. So in this case, they use an LED panel on the back to improve color vision. And so they use about the same intensity, nine milliwatts per centimeter squared for 15 minutes to get that benefit. So again, it's all about these low intensities and adequate exposure times to turn on those systemic switches that benefits the body. And they know how effective this light is to the eyes and the rest of the body, so they covered the heads in foil. And it's interesting to note that this study didn't mention joules per centimeter squared at all. It's all about getting the right intensity and the right exposure time. You can calculate the joules per centimeter squared with basic math, but it's clearly more important to get the right intensity and the right exposure time. And of course, photobiomodulation studies are very very high quality because you can have a true placebo. The patients can be blindfolded or they use invisible wavelengths, and most importantly, they don't feel any heat. So people in both the treatment group and the placebo group don't feel anything at all, so they don't know if they're in the treatment group or not. This is one of the things that makes photobiomodulation studies so powerful. If you look up heat therapy studies, it's hard to do a true placebo because you're always going to feel heat, so you're going to know which group you're in. So like I mentioned, it's an interesting twist that they measured the penetration through the entire body, but then they do a systemic study. And one of the conclusions that you can read here is, if correct, then the depth of light penetration arising from longer wavelengths may not be a significant variable because all that is needed is a triggering effect on the targeted tissues, including the skin. So a very important conclusion, even though they demonstrate deep penetration with near infrared light, they go on to conclude that you don't necessarily need deep penetration because a lot of these mechanisms are occurring superficially with superficial absorption and then sending signals deeper into the body that trigger the healing and improvements. And they know they can achieve all these effects with relatively low intensities in the single digits and low double digits. So that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in.